Well, hello everyone. How are we today? How are we today? Can you be excited? Good. I'm a very high energy person, so I'm going to make sure that we're all having a great day today. So again, I love that bio. Thank you so much. Um, I am from Kinderville, Indiana, not far from Howe. Um, I was born and raised there and from a very small conservative town. And so I always felt the need to be a very open-minded individual, which I think has led me to be a, a much more diverse person, uh, leading me to many leadership opportunities across the state. So before I get started about what leadership means to me and about uh, ways that I have found leadership is effective in my life, I want to first let you guys know a little bit about the Miss America organization. Because right now, you might just see the crowd and think, Oh, I bet she might be catty, or maybe she's just a beauty queen. But fun fact, the Miss America organization is not a beauty pageant. We are a scholarship program. Uh, we are not judged on beauty on a scale of 1 to 10. We are judged on our speaking skills, our service skills, our talent. Um, and we win scholarship. We're the number one scholarship provider for young women in the country, which is huge, and it's something a lot of people are not aware of about us. And we foster talents and speaking abilities and give young women across the state of Indiana and across the country of America opportunities to serve their community uh, with the platform. Now, the crown actually symbolizes uh, something very important. There are four points on the crown, and that is no coincidence. And they all stand for something different. The first is scholarship, again, because we are a scholarship provider. The second is success, because of the organization, you have to interview for the job. You have to be out speaking in your community. It's giving you skills that are going to help you advance to be the best version of yourself. Um, and then the third is service. As Miss Indiana, my job is to travel the state of Indiana for an entire year to advocate for what I'm passionate about and to advocate for the organization that I'm a part of. And so, like he had said, I advocate for the arts to be funded in schools. I know that you guys have a theater program here, which is so awesome. Um, and I was actually someone who was involved in the arts myself. So I love to advocate for that. And I really believe that the arts can give students a well-rounded education and help people break out of their shells and be the most confident versions um, of who they are. So that's what I'm able to do as Miss Indiana. I've already traveled 22,000 miles in six months to be able to do different service projects, come and speak to schools um, from ranges from K through 12. And it's been such an experience to be able to serve my state. And then the last one is style, but it's not about what we wear, it's about branding ourselves as to who we are. Um, having the style to know what we have to offer our communities and what we have to offer the organizations we are a part of. Um, and that is something that I struggled with for a long time. So now that you know a little bit about what our program is about and understanding that it's not about what the TV shows and movies make us out to be, we are truly so much more. We're a scholarship program uh, that helps women really live their best lives and become the best version of themselves. And to be able to prove that, I'm obviously speaking in front of people today, and I want you to know, uh, genuinely, eight years ago, you wouldn't have caught me talking in front of even two people. I had severe social anxiety, I had severe depression, and I really uh, didn't feel like I belonged in my school or that I belonged in my community. I felt like an outcast. And I suffered with how I felt about myself, um, it was just so, so negative. And then I got involved in these arts programs at my high school. And with each production I was involved with, whether that was show choir or theater or just choir class, I, I developed this confidence, not because of music, but because when you are getting involved in your school or you're getting involved in your community, you're going to feel more connected to it. And you're going to make friendships. And you're going to feel like you belong there. Therefore, that's giving you more confidence. It's giving you more social skills. And the arts did that for me. Uh, for some people, it's athletics. Um, the athletics can give that to some people. I just can't throw a ball to save my life. So that's where the arts kind of played in my life. And for some people, it's about excelling academically or excelling physically. But for me, the arts saved my life because I went from someone who was very depressed to someone who gained confidence. Um, and so I'm forever thankful that the arts did that for me. And that's why I've chosen as Miss Indiana to advocate for that. So, you know, throwback to when I was finally gaining that confidence. I still wasn't quite at the point where I would consider myself a leader in my community. I had finally, finally at least developed the confidence to get in front of people, to sing in front of people, but you know, that only goes so far. I wanted to give back to the community that gave me the confidence to be able to do what I was doing. Um, I was blessed to come from a community that supported 
funded and appreciated the arts. So I wanted to give back and do more and be involved in my community now that I finally developed that connection to the community. And so I met this woman. She was very confident. Um, and she was a Miss Indiana. And I, at the time, I had all these misconceptions about this organization. I thought, oh, I would never do a pageant. That is not for me. Um, but her confidence and her speaking about what she was able to do across the state of Indiana it inspired me. And I, I saw how she was able to command a room, how she was able to lead by example with her confidence and just by being her authentic best version of herself. And I wanted to exemplify that because I was not there yet. Um, at the time, I was a high school student and um, someone who just struggled with comparison. I think that's something that we can all agree with. We've struggled with comparing at one time. Can you raise your hand if you've ever maybe compared yourself in any situation? We've all been there. Um, so at the time, I actually struggled with my self-image. In a society where social media is at the forefront of everything we do, and uh, there's so much pressure in society, sometimes it feels like we must think a certain way, act a certain way, look a certain way. And that only heightened when I got involved in the Miss America organization, if I'm going to be completely honest, but that was by my choice, because I got involved, and although I went in confidently, um, three years ago there was still a swimsuit competition, and so when I got involved, I was subjected to that, and people told me, you don't have the body to get involved in this organization. You don't have the right look to be Miss Indiana ever. You might as well give up. You are too big in the pageant world because usually you're a size zero to two was the typical mold. And I'm not a zero, a two, six, eight, or even a 10. I'm higher than that and I didn't belong. And I was told I would never achieve my dream of traveling and serving the state of Indiana. But you know what? I decided I'm going to try anyway. But unfortunately, for a number of years, um, it took me two years and 12 local competitions to even make it to Miss Indiana for the first time. And that was really hard. There was many times I wanted to give up on this dream of mine, and this was just my dream. Maybe your dream is to be the first female to do something, to be the first um, male of uh, your kind to do something. Maybe it's to be the first person from your hometown to succeed in a particular subject. But for me, I wanted to be Miss Indiana, and I was told I couldn't. And then I finally realized after those two years of failure that I was doing something wrong. So I decided to take a step back and really look at everything. And I decided that all of those comments about my body, all of those comments about who I was, I wasn't gonna let that turn me down anymore. And I had to make the personal choice to not let the comments of others bring me down. I had to stop comparing myself to other people that were involved in the same thing because you can be the first to do something. You can be the first person to achieve something. But if you don't believe in yourself, if you're constantly comparing yourself to those around you and having that negative thought and letting that manifest, you're not going to accomplish it because you're focused on the negative. So I think the biggest thing that I've taken away from my time is learning how to change that perception. So about a year and a half ago, after all of this failure, after two years of trying really hard, um, I finally made it to Miss Indiana and I didn't make the top 11 and I was heartbroken. But then I decided to change that mindset. I stopped focusing on what I looked like and started focusing on the service. I started focusing on the leadership opportunities I could do. So I started a YMCA aftercare program where I could teach K-5 through music. I started fundraising um, independently for Riley's Children's Hospital. I started doing things that Miss Indiana would do rather than just focus on what I was looking like when it came to the competition. And when I let the comparison go away, when I let my mindset be positive, and I replaced my negative thoughts or the negative thoughts of others with positive affirmations, my life was changed. And just a year and a half later, I went from not even making the top 11 in 2017 to winning the title of Miss Indiana, which is a really big jump, and it was something that was very unexpected. But it was all because of my mindset that I achieved that dream. And then I was even able to go on to Miss America um, and surpass my goals, winning $7,000 in scholarship um, by winning talent and making the top 15. Um, but not because of how I looked, but because of my confidence in myself. And what was amazing about my story coming full circle was a week after I won Miss Indiana, they eliminated the swimsuit competition from the Miss America program. And I was the very first Miss Indiana to be able to compete 
at Miss America without having to be subjected to that. I was judged on my talent. I was judged on my interview. And I was judged on what service I would do as Miss America. And had I been Miss Indiana the year before, the timing wouldn't have been right. So another thing I've learned through my journey is that timing is everything. And maybe if you fail at first, there's a reason for that. And my reason was, you know, the universe or God didn't want me to be competing in swimsuits. Um, so they made sure that I won Miss Indiana at the time that it would be eliminated. So it was like everything happened for a reason. Um, so that's just a little bit about my story of perseverance. And now that I have landed the job of Miss Indiana, I get to go talk to people every day. I get to talk to people like you, people of all different backgrounds. And the number one thing I've learned in this leadership role is that mindset is everything. And I really want to dig deep into this because I talked about how mindset can help us achieve our dreams, but mindset is even more important when it comes to being a leader in our community. So Tom Brady once said, if you don't believe in yourself, how is anyone else going to believe in you? And I'm going to repeat that. So if you don't believe in yourself, how is anyone else going to believe in you? So again, I used to not believe in myself. And it was really easy once I won this title, when I was being looked at and recognized and being looked up to, to almost get back into that mindset of comparing myself to other state title holders or other people who were um, in the same arts opportunities I was in. But I decided that the most important thing that I can do for the other people looking at me, um, whether that's as Miss Indiana or as Lydia getting involved in the arts or as uh, someone who is a volunteer in my community, it's so important for me to believe in myself and to understand that when you believe in yourself, you have the opportunity to believe in other people. It's, I mean, because if you don't love yourself, how can you pour out love into other people? So it is so important to give yourself those positive affirmations. It's so important to uh, love yourself, believe in yourself, because when you do, then everyone else can as well. And you can't let the naysayers hold you back from all you want to accomplish as a leader in your community. Um, I know that there are times that we feel like we can't go forward, and we've just got to wake up every day, and instead of thinking, oh no, it's going to be a really rough day, you have to think, what can I do to make day to day good? Because if you have a positive outlook on life, you can have a positive outcome. And I'm so blessed to be in an opportunity where um, I've had young women and even men um, come and talk to me about how they've seen my growth because they knew me before. They saw that I used to have all of these issues with comparison and this negative mindset, and they've seen me overcome that. And, and it's truly life changing when you allow yourself to just simply believe in what you are, who you are, staying true to what you believe in, what you have to offer. Um, you know, I remember two years ago when I decided to wear that one piece, um, everyone else was wearing bikinis for swimsuit, and I know this is a personal um, example for myself, but just think about a time where you decided to do something for your morals or something you believed in and other people doubted you for it. Um, and I decided to wear a one piece because morally, that's what I was convicted to do for my heart, and that's what I was confident in. And I was told I would not succeed because of that, but here I am, I accomplished my goal because I simply stayed true to who I was, I stayed true to my morals, and I just simply believed in myself. Um, so it's just so imperative that we remember to put ourselves first um, when it comes to our mental health, because if we're a leader, you want to put your community first, and you want to do so much for commu your community, but you're not going to be able to be successful if you, at the end of the day, are so concerned um, and are in a negative place with your mental health. Because you'll go to that leadership opportunity, you'll go out in your community, and it'll be evident that you aren't confident or you don't believe in your mission, and how are other people supposed to follow suit in whatever you want to accomplish with your leadership roles. You really have to foster that confidence um, and help others around you feel that confidence and see how important it is to put your mindset at the forefront of everything, um, because it can really inspire everyone around you. Um, I know that it's, it's really hard, I think, especially for our generation, to not compare. I think there's a lot of pressure, especially with our peers. I think I felt that a lot in high school, and even as a college student. Um, I think there's just so much pressure to think a certain way, or act a certain way, or believe a certain way, or to do things like everyone else. But we are all individuals. Um, who have amazing things to offer the world, 
and to offer people as leaders. And uh, when we allow ourselves to tap into the most confident version of ourselves without crossing the line of arrogance, it, there is such a beautiful thing that can happen with where you go in life because you won't say no to opportunities doubting that you can do them anymore. Um, that's another huge aspect of confidence because when we're not confident, we'll just easily let opportunities pass us by because we think we can't do it. But when you allow yourself to think that you can do the impossible or that you can do what people think or maybe have told you you can't, it's one of the most um, amazing experiences to liberate yourself from the naysayers of others or even your own negative thoughts. Um, so a few things that I think really helped me um, overcome this, and these are just some things that I think can help anyone that has struggled with self-image or maybe confidence as a leader or even confidence as an individual. When you wake up in the morning and you start your day positive, giving yourself those positive affirmations, you're going to have a more positive day. When you find yourself manifesting negative thoughts, whether you think that you just have a really hard life or you're having a really hard day or you're never going to be able to accomplish anything, I know that we've all been there where we just feel like we are on um, a very negative path to failure and we're not believing in maybe what we have to offer. The most important thing to do is communicate with your loved ones because usually what we're internally saying to ourselves, when we say it out loud, it kind of sounds crazy. Like, I'm not kidding. When you like actually verbalize to other people, I just feel this way about myself. And if you talk to a loved one about that, I bet you, not just because they're your mom and they love you, I bet you because they see the potential in you, they will say, you know what, no, I see this potential in you. I see not this negativity, but this positivity in you. And you have to start seeing yourself in that light. You have to start um, replacing that negative thought with a positive one, as hard as it might be. And just remember to love the people around you. Because as Miss Indiana, I've been able to meet hundreds of people, and I haven't just been able to impact them. I, I'm not even talking about the impact I've been able to make on them. They've made an impact on me because they have given me a more open mind. They have shown me um, their confidence and how they thrive in life. And I've unfortunately seen a lot of people who also feel so negatively on themselves. And the second they release that mentality, amazing things start happening in their life whether that's getting a job or just flourishing in the career that they're already in. So many amazing things can happen when you tap into these small life choices that can give you a more positive mindset. And I think when leadership is talked about, we're usually talking about what you need to do to be more effectively communicating, which is really important, but actually mindset is a huge aspect of communicating. Because when you feel negatively about yourself, you're not going to feel positive communicating with others because in the back of your mind, you're negatively thinking, oh, is what I'm saying okay? Am I being understood? But when you're a confident person and you overcome that mentality, you just are able to communicate with people and you feel confident in what you have to say. Um, it's so important to get to that place because everything about being a leader will fall into place if your mindset is first correct. You can't go lead a room if you deep down don't even like yourself. So it's so important to give yourself that self-love. Um, I like to say you have to stop comparing yourself if you want to start conquering. Again, you have to stop comparing yourself if you want to start conquering your own life. And again, if you don't believe in yourself, how is anyone else going to believe in you? And I just wanted to leave that message with you guys. Obviously, um, my life is a great example of how mindset can help you overcome your obstacles and how it can help you reach your dreams. Whether that's uh, my dream of being Miss Indiana, whatever your dream is, think about that dream right now, visualize it. Is your mindset holding you back from accomplishing that? Are you um, letting negativity manifest you and holding you back from accomplishing whatever in life it is that you want to do? Or are you letting maybe the negative comments of others hold you back from realizing that you can actually accomplish that dream? Because all of us are capable if we just allow ourselves to have that positive mindset and push past the negativity of others and our own mind. Um, so thank you so much. I just really wanted to preach the word of uh, positive thinking because I think mindset is not talked about enough. Mental health isn't talked about enough. And if you guys um, ever struggle with this, um, please reach out to um, adults. I know, it, I mean, honestly, as hard as it is to talk to our parents about things, or maybe our elders or our adults or our teachers, they've been through it all emotionally. They can, they understand where you've been through. 
get help if you are going through a lot of negative thoughts, because talking to other people is really what helped me break out of that. Um, and just believe in yourselves, because then other people will believe in you, and you can be the best leader that you could possibly be. Thank you.